Hi there. I think there's only one word on almost everyone's lips this week, and that is coronavirus. I think we've all experienced the social panic and anxiety this week with the COVID-19 or the coronavirus uh, pandemic that's you know hit South Africa and I think the panic shopping and those type of things has happened. And this week probably the most common question I got was doctor how is this virus going to affect my cancer treatment? So I'd like to unpack a little bit about cancer and its uh, interaction with the coronavirus. Uh, back here on the on the monitor I've got an image of a coronavirus and it sort of looks like quite an interesting little creature. And the reality is coronaviruses are not unknown. We've known coronaviruses for a long time. Uh, they do cause sort of a flu-like type of illness but this specific strain that we're dealing with at the moment is a new strain. So our bodies haven't been exposed to it before. Um, we haven't built up immunity to that and that is why it's causing such a severe infection. Uh, in fact, more so than the common flu. It's not a virus that kills lots and lots of people. The mortality rate at this stage internationally is under 3%. And those patients that are at significant risk are generally the patients that are older, especially patients above 70. So the big question is, should you as a cancer patient be more concerned about this virus? We have very limited data that's available that we can use to make deductions from. A lot of the statements that are being made internationally are really anecdotal. Uh, doctors that are experts that are you know uh, interviewed by different news stations and being asked their opinion and then is being sold as scientific data. And you know it doesn't matter whether an expert says something it's really still anecdotal if it's not based on proper research. China being the first country where this virus started obviously have the most experience and there's been one publication in Lancet Oncology uh, about cancer patients and their risk of actually having the worst outcome with the coronavirus. But it's important to note that in the study they looked at about 2,000 patients that have been tested positive for the coronavirus infection and only 18 of those patients had cancers and some of them had cancers many years before they got sick. And in that study they said, well, patients with cancer or a history of cancer have a higher risk of you know, getting seriously ill. But the reality is the age in that 18 patients were significantly older than the age of the patients that were in the general population. And we know older patients do have a higher risk of having a more severe illness. Also, in the cancer group, there were many more smokers versus the non-cancer group. And we know smokers also are at higher risk. So I'm not sure that we can truly say that having had cancer before exposes you to a higher risk of complications with a viral infection. Having said that, we know that if patients are on active treatment, things like you know big surgical operations or patients with chemotherapy, that it does influence your immune system and your risk of getting infections or having more severe infections are certainly higher. And therefore, we do generally take more precautions in that group of patients. So, what should you be doing if you're a cancer patient in this time where the coronavirus is threatening our country? Number one is do the right things first. Stay out of places where there are lots of people congregating together. That is the number one way that this virus will propagate itself. It gets spread from one person to another. So places like restaurants and bars and uh, movie theaters where there are lots of people 
touching the same surfaces and you come there and you're touching those same surfaces. So try and stay indoors and limit your exposure to other people as much as possible. Number two is the most likely way that you can contract this virus is by touching or getting the virus on your hands. We tend to touch our faces and our noses and our mouths very frequently during the day. And if you have the virus on your hands and you touch your nose, there's a very good chance that you will then implant that virus onto your nose. Much more likely so than someone coughing a meter away from you. That is why there's very little evidence that wearing a mask actually protects you from becoming infected. So, very importantly, keep your hands clean. Wash them regularly, disinfect them regularly, uh, disinfect the surfaces. If you go to a public place where other people have touched the surfaces, you wash your hands when you get back in your car or you clean your hands when you get back into your car. Any disinfectant, um, alcohol, things like Savlon or Dettol or chlorine solution, something like a 1 to 7 uh, solution of household chick with water, will clean your hands equally well. Avoid going and buying fancy N95 masks and gloves and things like that. Data have shown that the highest chance of a healthcare worker becoming infected is the time when he takes that mask off or the time that he takes his gloves off because he thinks he's being protected. He takes the equipment off, throws it away and now the virus is on his hands. There are no known vitamins and supplements and things that you can take that will actively protect you against viral infections, things like coronavirus. So don't waste your money on all kinds of fancy things that you go and buy. Okay, rather spend your money on getting decent quality food, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, um, keep yourself you know, hydrated and avoid contact with other people. The next thing that one should consider is that most cancers, by the time you get diagnosed, have been in your body for quite a long time. There's no emergency in having that cancer operated you know, tomorrow or next week or in two weeks time even. In some cancers, we could theoretically even wait several weeks before we have to go and do surgery. The next thing to consider is that there are lots of cancers that we can treat upfront without chemotherapy or without surgery. And yeah, I'm specifically thinking about breast cancer, where we can use endocrine therapy, anti-estrogen therapy, to start killing the cancer, to start shrinking the cancer, and buying us time to only do the surgery in four or six or even sometimes 12 months. So we can theoretically treat patients with fairly easy medication that's not going to affect your immune system and not going to expose you to an operation until this whole pandemic in South Africa has died down. So I think the next thing is you ask your oncologist or your treating physician whether there's an alternative way that we could maybe buy some time to get through this pandemic without damaging our immune system. If you have to have chemotherapy or you have to have a big operation, I think it is then very important that you self-isolate, that you try and avoid your contact with other people that can bring the infection to you as much as possible. And with this, I know people always want to sympathize and they want to bring you flowers and everything, but I think stay away from physical contact with other people. Do that sort of WhatsApp video call, uh, use social media, but try and steer away from physical contact with people wanting to come and visit you. If you do get sick, phone your doctor. Don't go to the office, don't go to the emergency room in a rush and expose yourself to potential other infections. Phone your doctor first. There are specific criteria for when someone should be concerned. Remember, there are normal colds and flus running around as well in the coming months. So it might be that you just have a normal cold. So don't go running to the emergency unit with every little symptom, symptom that you have. If you are scheduled to see your doctor and you are feeling sick, then phone them, tell them what you're experiencing, 
because the main question will be, do you really need to go to the office? Can we manage this over the phone without physically having you in the doctor's office? Uh, in our practice, in our unit, we're already trying to set up online video conferencing with patients, doing telephonic follow-ups, and actually trying to avoid patients having to come into the office unnecessarily. That is a major way that we can protect each other against becoming infected. If you should contract the virus, like with any other flu or cold virus, the treatment is going to be symptomatic and supportive. That means eating well, staying hydrated, that's really important, enough bed rest. If you have a high fever or you have body aches and pains, which is a common symptom, then using something like paracetamol. There's been some uh, suggestion from France that you should avoid things like anti-inflammatory medications, things like ibuprofen. The reality is it's not universally being accepted, but in general we say if patients are really sick, then they tend to get dehydrated and if you use anti-inflammatories, you can actually damage your kidneys that way. So paracetamol in most cases is really a safe medication that you can use. If you think that you're in trouble and you're getting worse, then you phone your doctor and we will advise you when you need to come to hospital for maybe further admission and management in hospital. Avoid using cortisone or prednisone unless you have been on that already. Patients that are specifically treated with cortisone tends to have a worse outcome if they have a severe respiratory infection, a viral respiratory infection. And that's been shown in the previous sort of swine flu and avian flu crises that we had. So please, if you don't get better after two or three days, uh, avoid taking cortisone and things like that because that might actually make your risk higher. So in summary, I'd like to say that a lot of people might get this virus. Most of them will have a mild to moderate disease. They will stay at home for a few days and they will be fine. There are going to be some patients that get sick enough to be admitted to hospital and some might actually need to be admitted to ICU. We don't want to flood our healthcare facilities with sick people because that means that we won't be able to do surgeries for cancer patients. We won't be able to admit patients for chemotherapy and things like that. We want to try and limit the extent to which this infection is going to impact our country. Therefore, it is really important that we try and stay indoors. Avoid getting this virus from other people. Keep your hands clean. Wash them regularly. Use disinfectants and disinfect the surfaces that get touched regularly. Things like cell phones, pens, uh, desk surfaces, stuff like that. Don't panic, please. Most people will, if they get sick, recover fully, just like most other flus. I pray that the social and economic effect of this virus will not overwhelm us and that God will protect us against the effects that this thing will have in this country. If we stand together, then we will overcome this and we will be stronger after this than what we were before. I pray that you will be safe, that your cancer journey will not be affected by this and that we will be able to manage this social threat together with your cancer threat in a very reasonable way. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe, like it, share it. Uh, if there's any questions, please leave a comment below. I'm quite happy to answer. Have a wonderful day.